everybody, it's Wendy. Welcome to my YouTube channel and blog. Today we are going to make this amazing, beautiful card, and I really hope you enjoy this video. I want to start out by saying this video is a little long, so hang with me till the very end, okay? So I'm showing you a few examples of the cards that I've made using this amazing technique. This technique is the easiest watercoloring technique you will ever do, and anybody can do it. I promise you. You can see these cards turned out absolutely gorgeous. They are so much fun. And I know that you can do this watercolor technique. I've been fearful that since I've started doing some more watercolor stuff that people would say, oh, I can't do this. But this is something anybody can do, I promise you. So let's jump in, shall we? I have a piece of Strathmore 140 pound watercolor paper here and it's cut at five by seven. I'm using Lost Lagoon and Smoky Slate pens to create the background. So these are Stampin' Write markers. Make sure your marker is inked up really well. If you need info on inking up your markers, you can click the little uh, icon at the top of the screen to find out how to re-ink your markers. And I'll, I have an instructional video for that. So all I'm doing here is very loosely coloring in um, these two shades all across the watercolor paper. I'm coloring, 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 and I'm getting it pretty thick on there because I want it to be nice and saturated. And all you have to do is choose some colors. And at the end of this video, or somewhere in here, I show you <laughs> a few different color combinations that you can use to help you get started. So when I originally picked these two colors, I really didn't know what it was gonna end up being like, but it ended up giving me a beautiful watercolor background. And you're gonna see that as we go on. So now I'm taking a nice wide brush, picking up lots of water on that brush and simply going back and forth over the top of what I've just colored. Um, and as you can see at first, it just kind of still looks like marker. It really does not, look like anything's changing or anything's different but as I keep working this water down into the paper it's going to start pulling these colors back out of the paper and letting me move them around and you can see that starting to happen here so again I'm working I'm working it I'm working it and my goal here is to get rid of some of those harsh lines that look like marker lines and now you can see I'm taking my brush and I'm just kind of patting in different areas. I don't want, the Lost Lagoon is a heavier color, it's a stronger color, so I wanna be careful about not covering up that uh, smoky slate completely. I still wanna see it, but I'm dragging some of the Lost Lagoon into the smoky slate, and this is just something you have to practice and play with. So this is what it ended up doing. It really pulled out some purples. Now, I highly recommend that you let this sit and dry on its own and not heat setting it. When you heat set watercolors, and especially something that doesn't have a super strong pigment, it kind of help, It kind of causes the color to fade. So here's another example. This is using Tempting Turquoise and Cucumber Crush, and I did the exact same pattern that I just did. And you can see it made a gorgeous background. So you can play around with different colors to make different backgrounds and just see how they turn out. Okay, so we're gonna work on this card and I'm going to grab a couple stamp sets. One of the stamp sets I used to create the clouds is the birthday or balloon celebration stamp set from the Occasions catalog. And then I'm also using the beautiful ride stamp set and that's also in the Occasions catalog. You can get either one of these items in my online store. And it, by the way, if you check my description in the video link down below, you'll see that there is a link to my blog. Okay, and that has all the details, supplies, etc., etc., And lots of pictures too of all these pretty cards. So I had two little bitty pieces here that I cut off another stamp set that were seeds and I use those as my raindrops. So get creative with your stamps. Cut them apart if you want to. It doesn't hurt them, especially the photopolymer ones. Um, and I don't mind doing that because it get, it allows me to get more use out of my stamps. Some people that makes you cringe, I know, and I'm sorry for that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so I'm using Versamark ink here and inking up my cloud. And I realize I need to get my awesome piercing mat 
because I am stamping onto watercolor paper with a photopolymer stamp. So even using regular paper, sometimes when you um, stamp a solid image with a photopolymer stamp, it doesn't always give you a super crisp, clear image and it can be a little muddled and I don't like that. So using the piercing mat is a great way to get a beautifully stamped solid image every time. So that's why I pulled it in here and especially using watercolor paper because watercolor paper has some texture to it. So this really helps get all the ink down into the paper like I need it to. So this part's kind of hard for you to see because again, it's Versamark ink and I, it's just clear. So you really can't see where I'm stamping, but it's all going to come together. I promise. Um, something else I want to mention in this, for this video is that celebration is still happening till March 31st and you can get a free gift for every $50 you purchase in Stampin' Up! product. So if you need anything, make sure you hop on to my online store. I always send thank you cards for my orders because I so appreciate them. All right, so here I'm just adding the clear embossing powder. And I have to say that it's really important that you use clear embossing powder for this technique. It will not work if you use any other kind of embossing powder. So Stampin' Up! sells clear embossing powder and that's great and that's what I um, used for this video is the Stampin' Up! clear embossing powder and you, you do have to use that for this technique. So basically what's going to happen is after I'm done stamping all this and adding all the clear embossing powder I'm going to heat set the entire image and after I heat set it you're going to see hear how beautiful the colors start to become that are underneath those embossed images. Now, this is the part that's the magic. This is just one of the most beautiful things ever. And I learned this technique from watching a Jennifer McGuire video. And I just kind of went crazy with it, as you can see in all the different cards I made. So here you can see all those shiny clouds and how they have kind of trapped the dark color underneath them. So we're going to go back in with that wide brush and clean water. You want to make sure you have clean water and we're just going to drag water back over this piece and it's only going to lift color from the areas that are not embossed. So the beauty of this technique is everywhere that you've clear embossed is trapping that vivid, beautiful watercolor that you created. And it just lends itself to making some really amazing cards. I mean, this technique is just, it's just one of my new favorites. I sat down and spent two or three hours making cards like this because I was so excited to do this technique. Okay, so now here's the fun part. I have my microfiber cloth. And I'm just going over this. This is, um, by the way, you can get these microfiber cleaning cloths on Amazon. And then look at that. It lightens the entire background, but it kept my clouds and my raindrops dark. Now my, my piece is wet again. So what you don't see here is that I set it aside and just let it dry. You cannot heat set it or heat it to dry it after you've heat embossed that clear embossing powder because it'll melt it. So just FYI, these cards take a little extra time just because you have to set them aside and let them dry. Okay, so I'm using the Beautiful Bride, Beautiful Bride, Beautiful Ride stamp set and stamping this cute little slug bug onto um, watercolor paper. I wanted to watercolor the slug bug in red because I feel like it is gonna go so nice with the background I created and I used the real red marker and cherry cobbler marker and scribbled them onto a acrylic block and just picked up the color and painted that way. So they, they did a great job and I love the way the slug bug turned out. Here I'm just taking my black Stampin' Right marker and running it all around the edges of this bug that I hand cut out. And that gives just a very nice finished look on the edges. And then of course my little slug bug needed a puppy dog. And so I'm just adding the puppy dog here and then we're gonna color him in. Sorry about my head being in the video. It happens, as you know, if you watch. Here I'm trying to decide which window I want him in. <laughs> so I end up stamping him in the front window and uh, I had to stamp him again and I was so brave in doing that because I ended up getting him right in the right spot. And then I 
think I use early espresso marker um, to color him in. Yes, I did. So this is a, you know what, this is chocolate chip. Um, so I'm using chocolate chip ink and I'm just taking just a little bit of water on my brush and then coloring this puppy in just to give him some color and make him show up there in the window. I just love him. I think he's adorable. And then um, we can start putting the card together almost. <laughs> this card was a labor of love, I have to say, and it's only because I was so unorganized with it. I really did not know how the card was going to come together when I started making it on video. I'll be honest. I kind of was like, well, I have these ideas and then I was going to wing it. And then because I had to keep setting the um, paper aside to dry instead of heat setting it, this video ended up getting broken up into a bunch of pieces. So that's why you see it like this. So I am, you, I use my embossing buddy to kind of, you know, clean that surface and make sure that my um, embossing powder wouldn't stick. And then I'm stamping Life is a Beautiful Ride onto the watercolor paper in Versamark ink. Then I'm going to use my white embossing powder to put it on top of that sentiment there. And then I'm going to heat set it. So when I got done heat setting it, it looked like this. And now all I have to do is assemble my card. So I used foam tape on the back of my card piece because... I wanted this piece to lay really flat. I did not want to end up in a situation where um, it was curling or buckling in different areas. This card is one of my favorite cards I think I've ever created. So I really wanted it to come out nice and have good craftsmanship. So the way to do that was to use this um, double-sided foam tape that I get at my local hardware store. And it's just super sturdy and it makes watercolor pieces really substantial on a card so I highly suggest having some of this in your craft room if you're gonna do any watercoloring for sure um, especially watercoloring like this where you're soaking the entire piece of paper with water so I just went ahead and put that down on my card base which is a piece of thick whisper white cardstock from Stampin up cut at eight and a half by uh, actually I'm sorry it's cut at four and a quarter by eleven then I added a bunch of dimensionals to my little bug. And again, you can see I covered the back of the bug with dimensionals because I wanted the same thing. I wanted it to be really sturdy. And that's it. That's my card. My little doggy driving through a rainy day because that's life, right? Sometimes we have rainy days. And I just love how this card turned out. It's just one of my faves. Thanks so much for watching and sticking with me through this long video. If you want to watch more of my videos, click on the images that you see here. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit that little thumbs up like button and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.